Today, we're going to be comparing five different online accredited universities where you can complete a cybersecurity degree for under $15,000 and in way less time than a traditional college. I'll be breaking things down for you in terms of hackability, like little tips and tricks you can do to reduce the cost and time of the degrees. We're gonna cover the potential cost of completion from each university. We're gonna go over the university reputations and kind of rank them one through five. We're gonna cover the curriculum at a high level. And then finally, I'm gonna give my choice, like tell you which one I prefer and which one I actually went to, because I actually have three degrees already from one of these universities. So I'll talk about that a bit. I do have some pretty strong opinions on education, one of which being if your whole bachelor's degree costs over $15,000, it's kind of crossing over into the borderline scam territory. Of course, there's exceptions to this if you want to go to some crazy Ivy League school, but generally speaking, your degree shouldn't cost that much. And like I said, I personally hold three degrees from one of the schools on this list, and none of those degrees cost me over $5,000 to complete. And I've had some pretty decent jobs after graduating as well, like principal security analyst, cybersecurity program manager, and senior information security engineer. And in the end, I'm going to talk about the utility of your degree. That is like how you should be thinking about your degree in terms of its usefulness when it comes to job hunting and maintaining your employability and that type of thing. And it feels a bit weird to say, but I think my views on this topic are actually correct and I want to impose them on everyone. And for this purpose, I'll be doing a $500 giveaway. So just check the description for how to enter. It's super simple. But before we get started, in exchange for this over-edited Red Panda graduating university, please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell. The team would really appreciate it a lot. So getting right into things in terms of hackability, the list of universities I came up with are Thomas Edison State, South New Hampshire University, Purdue University Global, Western Governors University, and then University of Massachusetts Global. And the first topic we're gonna to cover for each school is hackability. Every single one of these schools meets two criteria, which is why I picked them. The first one, which is super important, is every one of these universities allows you to transfer in externally up to 75% of the degree from external credits, which is really, really huge. That's three-fourths of the degree you can transfer into the program. The second reason why I chose these schools is either the tuition is incredibly cheap or there's like a flat rate program, which means you pay for a term at a time, like you pay for some determined time period and you're allowed to complete as many courses in that time period as you can. For point number one, that is being able to transfer in three quarters of your credits externally. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. For example, it could be like community college credits, could be industry certifications like CompTIA certifications, or it could be credits from non-university educational institutions that offer like ACE accredited courses. You can take those and then transfer them into your degree program. What I personally did is I used study.com, which is an educational institution, and they offer super cheap courses. They're ACE accredited, which you can take and then transfer into the university to count as credits and knock off some of the classes. And when you compare like the study.com classes in terms of credit hours versus normal university, they're 90% cheaper. They're like less than a tenth of the cost of university classes. It's absolutely insane. Most of the time, it's less than one tenth of the cost. So if you can take a lot of courses from study.com, you can imagine like what that's going to do to your overall cost to graduate. So getting back to hackability, the way it works is you would evaluate any pre-existing college transcripts that you have, like if you went to community college before, and just to kind of figure out what you have left to do. You would figure out the study.com equivalent courses for any courses that you had left and check the link in the description. I did spreadsheets for all five of these universities. You would sign up for study.com, definitely use the 30% discount link. I'll put that in the description, complete all those courses transfer them into your degree program, enroll, and then finish the rest of your degree as quickly as you can. The reason this is a hack is because all those study.com credits are stupidly cheap. If you think about it, if you absorb half of your degree at one-tenth the cost, it's going to make the whole thing way, way cheaper. Not to mention a lot of the courses from study.com can be completed much faster than like a normal university course can be. Me personally, I can complete about four study.com classes per month. Some people can do more. Some people can do less. It just depends on you know how much time you have and how much energy you're willing to dump into it. So in terms of total cost, this is what I came up with. I'll put a link to this spreadsheet in the description. So basically these are just the lists of the universities that we're talking about. I'll kind of explain some stuff in here later. If you click on them, for example, it will go to another page and it shows all the courses for that program, as well as the equivalents that you can take from study.com and transfer them in. These might not all be exact with the exception of probably WGU. 
But for example, if we go to Purdue, I put like links in here so you can see the actual transfer sheet too. So you can double check this, but it's always good to check with your enrollment counselor. But back to the total cost, um, this is basically how I calculated it. Um, the total number of classes that I found that you could transfer in from study.com, the total number of credits that would be absorbed by study.com, and the equivalent credit per hour that study.com is costing, which is really, really cheap. Because remember, normal credit per hour is like $300 per credit hour is usually cheap for universities. Um, this is like the total cost that you'll end up spending at study.com. Study.com is like $235 a month without the discount. With the discount, it's like 167 something for the first three months. This is how much you'll, you'll end up spending at study.com about for each different degree program. And then this is how much uh, each university cost, assuming you go to it for a year. And remember these are like, most of these are competency based, like flat rates. So you just pay for a single term and do as much as you can. So WGU for the cyber program costs about you know $8,700, assuming you go to it for a year. And then you can kind of look at the rest of these. And then the total cost is just simply adding the study.com cost to the one year of university. And, and then it ends up being this much. You might be thinking one year is pretty fast for university, but but people can complete it in six months, right? It just depends on your preparation and how much like time and energy you have to dump into it. So I would say like one year for a bachelor's at a competency-based program where you can pay like a flat rate and do as, as many as you can, which all of these universities on the list you can do except for SNHU, I believe. That school is just really inexpensive. Um, it's really it's really reasonable to do if you can approach it strategically and like really execute. And I do wanna say the reason why I covered this UMass Global My Path Red is because their my path is the competency based one where you can just do a lot of credits at once but they don't actually have a cyber degree in that my path program they only have a general it degree um, umass does have a cyber degree but it's kind of like they're more like i guess normal like online structured program so if you want to do the accelerated thing you, you just have to do like the it degree i just wanted to include it in here because i think it's like really reasonable and really good but they just didn't have a, a cyber program specifically in their accelerated program and one last thing i just want to reiterate uh, if you intend to go through with this which i strongly recommend you do before spending any money just make sure that the course transfers still line up in case something changes in the future with a spreadsheet. Also, some of them are, it's not like really well-defined, like WGU's uh, course mapping to study.com is really well-defined, but the other universities are like not as well-defined. I just lined them up the best that I could. And I spent a long time on this, like three days of my time is like a lot for me. And I, I spent a long time like making these spreadsheets. So I think it's you know relatively good and accurate. But before you spend money, it's always good to check with the enrollment counselor just to make sure. Like study.com is, it's not that expensive. You know, with a discount, it's like 160 something dollars a month, but it's good if you can avoid taking a class that you didn't need to do. So just make sure the mapping is correct. I think it is, but make sure yourself and then talk to the enrollment counselor. So getting into time to completion for each one of these degrees, it really just depends on how fast you want to go and like how much energy you have. For me personally, if I do classes uh, at study.com, like I said, I can do about four per month or about one per week or slightly more than one per week. Some people can do them like way faster. It just depends on the person. It depends on the class. It, it just depends on a lot. But basically with study.com, with no discount, it's $235 per month and you're allowed to complete two classes. But if you want to do more, it's like an additional $70 per class. So if you do four classes, you know, it'd be $235 plus another $140 for that month, right? And then with the discount, you would just minus, you know, 30% off of $235. So it will end up being like whatever this number is on the screen. If you think in terms of like how many courses from study.com you have, just kind of divide that by four if you intend to do four per month. And then you can see like how many months it will take you to get through the study.com portion. And then if you want to just assume you're going to go hard and strategize, you can just tack on another year to the end of that and just allocate that year to completing the rest of the coursework at like WG or Purdue University Global or wherever you happen to go. So for me personally, I did the IT degree first at WGU. I didn't know about like acceleration or anything at that time. I kind of figured it out like halfway through. I was like, wait a second, I can go like really fast with this. For that degree, I transferred in a bunch of stuff and it took me about like five and a half months to finish it. 
And then my master's degree in cybersecurity, I already knew like what the deal was at WGU and I researched all the classes and I just prepared and I just did my best. And I, I finished that degree in less than a month, which is really crazy. I don't expect anyone to do this. And then for the computer science degree, same thing. I strategized it. I even made a video about what I intended to do. I had some a lot of search at that point, and then I took three classes, three or four classes from study.com, and I transferred them in. It ended up I didn't like need one or two of the classes that I took, so I only transferred in like two two classes or something. But the whole computer science degree, I finished it in less than three months. It was like two months and fourteen days or something, just because I, I strategized about it and I read like reddit posts and stuff so if you like you know read reddit and degree forum and kind of see what other people are doing you can get through like both the study.com portion and the actual degree portion relatively quickly especially for those competency-based ones where you can just like take a single test to pass a class it just can go by really fast so you can kind of read the prompt I used here. It, it's like a brand new chat and I don't use memory, so I'm not manipulating it or anything. I basically was like, are you ready for a big brain task? This is your time to shine, don't fuck it up. Please rank these schools by reputation based on the provided information about center of academic excellence, blah, blah, blah. And then I listed out the schools and then it just came up with this ranking. You can click the link in the spreadsheet to actually read this if you want. But it just basically ranked them as like WGU number one, Purdue University Global number two, South New Hampshire, like SNHU number three, Thomas Edison four, because Thomas Edison doesn't have the NSA designation. And then UMass Global also doesn't have the designation. So it was ranked number five. So I don't want you to be like, oh, UMass is really bad. It's ranked number five. That's not the case, right? You can get any one of these degrees, which I'll, I'll kind of talk about this at, at the end of the video. This is just kind of more of an experiment. So I don't want you to be like, oh, WG is the best. It's the number one. Like, you know, it, it's really subjective, right? I will say the Center of Academic Excellence does have something to it, but that's not to say that TSU couldn't get the designation if they wanted with their current curriculum. They probably could, they just don't have it, right? So this is just more of like a, a fun thing and I don't necessarily want you to like gauge your decision based off of this. It's just like a, a fun experiment, right? But it does make enough sense to me because I, I went with WGU because it just made the most sense for me. But yeah, that is the section on reputation. And then getting into the high level curriculum, like kind of the little nuances and differences between the five different universities. Basically, WGU really stands out in this instance, in my opinion, because it offers nine different industry certifications. Most of them are recognized by the Department of Defense, and it's just really hu humongous value for the price. Um, the downside of WGU is it doesn't really have any electives within WGU itself. Whereas Purdue, it has like a lot of electives and then some flexibility on gen ed classes. And then SNHU and uh, TSU have a ton of general education flexibility. It's like super flexible. And they, ha they do have some uh, flexibility for electives. And then UMass, of course, is like the black sheep because it's, not, it's an IT degree, right? It's just like a general IT degree with like a broad coverage of different concepts. So that's like the high level differences in curriculum. WGU, again, really stands out because of the certifications. The only quote unquote downside of this is, in my opinion, certifications are more difficult to pass than some technology competency based class, if that makes sense. Security Plus is harder to pass than like intro to security at some college. That's just my opinion. So but yeah, WG really stands out for this because of their certifications. So getting into my personal pick, I actually, like I said, I went with the WG for all three of my degrees. The reason for this is it's just really straightforward and it was cheap and it included a lot of certifications like I talked about. Also, the study.com to WG mapping, it's just, in my opinion, it's just outlined really well. So you know exactly what to take from study.com, which will transfer in. Um, all the other universities, it's mapped out really well, but I feel like the way WGU, like they really take the time to do it on their actual website. If you go to like partners.wgu.edu, you can see the mapping there. It's just really good. So finally getting into the role that I think your degree plays, and this is a section that the giveaway is based on, so pay attention and do the giveaway rules and everything. Basically in IT and cybersecurity and just tech in general, right, it's largely unregulated in the sense that 
some random dude can walk off the street and just be the CTO or be like the lead systems engineer for some big Fortune 100 company. This is like in terms of credentials and degrees and like all this stuff. None of that is like required for tech and IT and cybersecurity at all, as opposed to like law or medicine or something where you need residency and clinical hours and like this, that certification in these qualifications. You don't need any of that legally speaking in IT. So when it comes to breaking into cybersecurity, for example, and staying employable, you should think about this thing that I came up with called employability framework. These are the different areas that you need to think about and care about when it comes to your employability and job hunting and just being able to like easily get a job if you need to. These are kind of all the different areas. There are also kind of like tiers of things that employers care about, if that makes sense. So for example, once you get an associate's degree, for example, the employers stop caring about your high school diploma, right? Or they care less about it. As soon as you get like kind of an entry level relevant certification, the employer kind of cares less about your associate's degree. Like if you have Security Plus, for instance, the employers will start to care kind of less about your associate's degree. And then once you have like a bachelor's degree, they'll they will care kind of less about your entry level degrees like your google cert they will care less about that if you have a bachelor's degree and then once you get like a high end certification the employers will care less about your bachelor's degree like if you have cssp for example or oscp ccna or any of those GAIAC certifications that for not always but for the most part those are kind of like higher than like a bachelor's degree when it comes to tech so if you have cssp the employer will kind of care slightly less about your bachelor's degree. And if you have like real world experience, the employer will care less about your high level certifications, if that makes sense. And the reason I'm bringing this up is I, I just don't think you need to spend like 80K on a bachelor's degree when it's not really going to matter like once you get CSSP or once you start working and you don't need like an 80K bachelor's degree to get a job, like you simply don't need that. If you look at the employability framework, right, if you have like some random average bachelor's degree in history, but you have CSSP and CCNA and like crazy projects, and maybe you go through my like cybersecurity, my cyber range or cyber course internship, you have everything that you need and more to get a job. So you don't need to spend like 80K on a bachelor's degree. Like I said, it's like, it's not going to matter. Like once you get like even six months of experience, the employer is going to like consider that like over your bachelor's degree. And that's just like the reality of things. So. In my opinion, you just need to get a bachelor's degree. Just get the one that you think is most interesting that you can get for like the most reasonable amount of money. Just get that and then square away the rest of the stuff in the employability framework and then enjoy your career in cybersecurity. Check out the spreadsheet and pick a school that you want to go to. It doesn't even have to be on there. If you use study.com, make sure to use the discount code. You can save like a, a pretty decent chunk of money from that. I'll put a link for all those in the description and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.